What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Study Hall here on TCG University for the card game Universes. My name's Tam, and I'm joined by... It's me, Jeff. My name is Jeff. James. <laughs> and Michael. Uh, what Study Hall is... My name is Jeff. What Study Hall is for the unenrolled <laughs> is we've taken a bunch of your guys' Universes topics, as well as some of our own, and we sit down and we discuss them for your amusement, entertainment, and knowledge. So with that said, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, oh, my goodness. I missed... I grabbed the wrong sheet. Would you go and grab uh, one of the... Uh, will you grab that sheet that's right over there? Yes, you producer. Yes, that yes. is perfect. Yes. Oh, yes, producer. Nope, that's it. That was perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Right here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just, nope, right, yep. right. Hit, hit. Hey. Oh, oh yeah. shit, he's on camera. Uh, fuck with the lights. I like <laughs> that's it. That's right, everybody. He is still alive. <laughs> Um, if you like the show, please go out and support us by liking our Facebook, subbing at the YouTube, or enrolling at the Patreon. All of those are their... Uh, whatever the link slash TCG University. So Facebook, YouTube, Patreon slash TCG University. Just like all of these people, uh, all of our Patreon supporters subscribed at the five dollar level in order to hear their, get their name read right here on the air by my beautiful, beautiful voice. We've got Andrew Dang, E.R.E. Melkor, Clay Cardwell, Adang. Jay Rogers, uh, Jared Hubbard, Drone Weeks Jr., Justin Farst. Tyler Zane Pease, William Stoll, Tracy Cardwell. Hi, Mom. Um, thank you very much for sponsoring the show, as well as Inked Games, as well as Cards Custom Build. But I will tell you about those two later. For now, Jeff, what have you been doing inside of Universes? What's uh, what's your week been like? Quick shout outs to Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. It's a Halloween cast we got going here. I wish we had a bunch of candy. The spooky. It's a spook cast. Yeah. I'm, Hashtag uh, too spooky. Under my under my hoodie, I'm dressed as a uh, Jimmy John's manager because I'm not a manager. So, I hilariously, I came to work today dressed as my manager. I went and I got a beard, and he recently broke his foot, and so uh, he got his cast off, and I stole his air cast, and he didn't know. Uh, using the clever ruse of my other manager. I was like, hey, is this okay that I do? It's, he paid like 50 bucks for this thing. She's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and so <laughs> I it. stole his cast. I stole uh, his name tag like three stole days ago. Stole his beard. I stole his wife. I grabbed, <laughs> we'll get there. I, I, put, I grabbed a fake beer from a local I saw, party I saw, store. I wanted, I wanted. Right? Um, and then this morning I went into also, his office. Also, you on your face. Yeah, I, I still have a little tape on my face. Uh, I went into his office and I grabbed uh, his awards and put them over by my teller station. And I almost grabbed a couple of pictures of his wife and his kids, but went, you know, that's a little, <laughs> that's too, far. A little too far. <laughs> and I did let him know. And he goes, thank you for not doing that. It would have been creepy. <laughs> and I was like, I'm down. I'm super down to not, not creep out my boss. So, yeah, big shout out to Halloween. Sorry, for Jeff, for interrupting. Um, for Universes... I just was playing in the campus championship. I played a Bakugo list. It seems really cool. We're um, looking to find a, something to play for Indianapolis. And that might be on the right track. We might have to change characters, maybe. Um, and then I also played this really cool Zolt 2 dot list. What about the Fog Blanket deck? Or what about the uh, Bakugo deck did you like? Um, Air. I I am actually a pretty big fair fan of what Air does. Um, it's it's fog blanket. Fog blanket's nuts. Like it is. It is a super rad card to the point where like maybe it's not Air. Maybe it is fog blanket. Like maybe because like fog blanket has two other symbols, and those two symbols might just be nutty right now. We don't know. Um. Yeah. The the Bakugo list was like. Uh, shout out to. Travis, he had to build my decks for this week because uh, I thought this was going to be like three weeks ago. And, <laughs> Happens. Uh, Life. And so the Bakugo list is just spamming. Loser. Loser. <laughs> yeah, Travis got a big hard on for that card. Um, I don't think that's like the best part of it, though, actually. I think uh, Bakugo has a response, clear a fury after it's blocked. Yeah. I think that's actually insane for what Fog Blink is trying to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, explosive Brace is a Fury. I mean, all of his attacks are a Fury. Yeah. But Explosive Brace is a good one. I, uh, I actually would love to maybe do something with, like, Spike 2. I think Spike 2, Fog Blanket, sounds really sick. And I still, I very much still want to do Spike 2 uh, with uh, Covert Intent. I think that deck 
can can actually have some real legs if we really dedicated a lot of time to it. I think co- I think Spike gets getting a free momentum whenever he wants, and then a covert intending away the big cannon. It's like ah, oh, already Spike. I haven't used Spike at all, and I've cleared five cards. Cool. Let's get it. Cool. <laughs> I did draw five, and you had to block three times. All right. How many cards you got left? Yo, doesn't that Spike have life too? <laughs> yep. Yo. Right, so uh, under life, we do get to play Feel My Power. You also get to play over P- OV Positive. OV Positive if we want to. You get to play Spear Gun, too. We do. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's oh, what Dex, I, oh, that's shit. What I Dex building this itself. Sounds, this sounds sick. All right, I'm going to write it down. All right, and that's our list, guys. All right. <laughs> uh, Tyler, cut all this so that nobody steals our list. <laughs> Spike. Two. James, how about you, man? Uh, starting with Sunday... Uh, we had both our fire pin event and our evil pin event. Totally forgot about that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. That was like a week ago at this point. Uh, I want, so I had you, I had Tam build me an Akuma deck that could work for both things because I had a party to go. I had my sister's birthday party to hang out with. Big shout out to Samantha Stevens. The manager. The manager. Um, so I had to, um, I had that, and I wasn't sure if I was going to make one or the other, but I was like, just make it for both. So we, that's what you did, which was pretty cool. And I got to play in both, which was also pretty sick. Um, I won the first one playing Evil Akuma, and then lost to you in finals play in the fire event. So yeah. So I got first and second in the uh, fire, fire and Evil Pin events. Um, and then for Campus Championship, I built a Fey deck three weeks ago. Uh, that was a sick Fey deck, plays eight attacks. Pretty neat, pretty neat. And then I built a Takeda deck. Plays 13 attacks. So that, that, that was also pretty neat. Both of them lost in top four. It's pretty sick. That was bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Indianapolis, what are you thinking right now? Uh, mixture between that, uh, that actually, that uh, Takeda deck or Akuma. Okay. Yeah. Okay, red, red, red. Michael. Quick, hold on. Can We're I holding. Snap. Yeah. And I forgot about the pin events. So in the <clears throat> in the evil pin event, I played uh, Ken Two Dot. Because Ken Two Dot was affected by Lord Raptor. That's our reasoning. Ken is normally a good guy. He does not have the good symbol. He has void because he's been taken over by Lord Raptor's evil, evil. curses. And that deck was really really sweet. Playing playing under all. Play some, er, yeah right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Play reduction and then you play. A nutcracker, and they're dead. Yes, for and sure. And um, in the fire event, played a Tim Keith deck, and check uh, like shit all night. It's ridiculous. That deck is not fair. I didn't do well, but that deck is dumb. I agree. I agree. I'm not gonna disagree. <laughs> Michael, what'd you do? Um, on Sunday we went to Reflex Gaming's. Shout outs to Josh Hillers uh, for running a nice event. Shout out to um, Hills. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, I only played in the Evil Tournament because I was interested in the Evil Pin, but I was not interested in the Fire Pin. Um, so I played Suzaku for the Evil Tournament. Don't even ask. He's clearly evil. Um, and it was pretty sweet. Um, how, got to how does he have his evil? What? Anyways, um, I don't understand. Hey, Tam, do you remember what he said at the end of that sentence? Don't even ask. You know, I caught up now. My <laughs> bad. <laughs> I was just so pondering the possibility of the of he, him being evil. Um, don't even ask. Thought it was a flavor thing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Reflex Gaming was a really, really nice um, quick plug. Uh, they have like a bunch of like computers and like a VR station stuff like that. They had so, uh, quite a few VR stations, like yeah. three or four. It was yeah. rad. Uh, so if you don't go down there for uh, card games, I definitely would check it out for like a gaming venue. It was it was really really nice. I was really really impressed. yeah. They ran a Smash tournament that we all played in too. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Yeah, it, was it was pretty fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I played Suzaku for that. Um. And then I've been messing around with Karama. Um. Trying to, I don't know, play something cool. Um, cause I don't want to play Gil, uh, and be a bandwagon. I want to play a character like Gil that isn't Gil, um, to do Gil like things that's yeah. not Gil. Yeah. Gil. Just, you know, to say Gil again. Yeah. Um, and then Gilligan <laughs> confirmed Gilligan the Island coming to you versus <laughs> <laughs> dibs on skipper. No joust. <laughs> um, and then for the campus championship, I built, uh, Kotal Khan under evil. Um, and it was just to get you there, uh, uh, get your deck with uh, 
Allurophobia, just a bunch of buffs for it. And then I was playing Morgan under good. Um, that deck's actually really fun. Uh, I'm trying to master playing Morgan. Um, I enjoy the deck a lot, and this is also why we can't have nice things. Um, I was about to say, Tam, you're the reason we can't have nice things. You know, you're going to yeah. vacuum that up later. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I so, feel uh, terrible about it. Yeah, I'm trying to work on this Morgan deck. Uh, that's probably what I want to play for Indy. Uh, I've just been playing Jetta. Uh, I played it for both events. What a basic I, Yep. I took out... Thank you. I took out all of the... Uh, the keyboard's just actually just right there, buddy. It's on the back side of the computer, right there. Thanks. Choo-choo kazoo. Um, I've just been playing Jetta since I didn't get to go to Nationals. Uh, he's who I would have played for Nationals and then been diversified by Chris Nixon. Big shout-outs, buddy. Um, it's all right. None of us got to go to Nationals. Yeah. Yeah. So in a... Keep going. In an alternate timeline, we, uh, yes. <laughs> Hashtag booty boys. Hashtag booty boys. Uh, in an alternate <laughs> timeline, we we for sure won nationals with Jetta. We beat Mark Tyner. Uh, in an alternate timeline? Right, in an alternate timeline where Chris Nixon's car got hit by a deer <laughs> and my grandpa didn't die. <laughs> That's going to say <laughs> That's a timeline. That's a, was one, was very, yeah, but here's the thing. Specific We wouldn't timeline. have had hashtag Boonie Boys. We wouldn't. You're right. And I like that so much more than a chance to win nationals. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> duh. Um, but I played I I my regular build, and it had, uh, for the evil tournament, had just like Detta and uh, uh, Skull Barrier and all these like like really low damage attacks and just like some value getcha cards. And then for the fire event, we couldn't play those. So I just tossed four Dragon Flare in. Wow, that deck was a monster. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Jetta with four Dragon Flare is real mean. Um, and it was just like, oh, this is turn two? I built four. This Dragon Flare is only tap three. Sometimes it was tap my whole board. But it still got there. It still smacked you. We'll build out the rest of our hand and then pass. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it's uh, besides that, I, have, I haven't personally been playing anything. Um, but there's nothing truly interesting to me. I've been doing a lot of theory crafting on some stuff. Uh, specifically with the death, death, life, and good symbols, just because I think Spirit Gun's not really a fair card, and what are ways to counter that card, and how to anti-meta that card, which we could get into if we really wanted to, but we're, it's not slated on the podcast. If it comes up, it comes up. Um, and so, for topic number one, what I actually want to talk about is... Why is our, how to be Spirit <laughs> <laughs> Why is our game so hype? Um, I am... A, all three of you guys are huge sports fans, right? Um, mm -hmm. To the point where you guys are in fantasy football leagues and you know everything about everything. Yeah. Just randomly. I don't know if and, it's random. And I, uh, I, I sit down and I watch a lot of competitive fighting games and moments are always so, so hype. And so my question is, is how do you... What is hype? What are some slight hype stories? I don't want to go too terribly long with this um, when it comes to, like, what on your stories, right? Because we could sit here and, and beat our own dicks forever talking about, oh, my, my plays was so good or I saw this really neat thing one time down in Puerto Rico. Like, we don't have to do any of that. But, like, what about Universes <laughs> is that hype factor? Because it's for sure, it it's one of the hypest games I've ever played. Um if you guys want to take it away, I'm going to do some computer stuff. I think the most hype thing about this game is getting your own card made and beating your opponent to get your own piece of cardboard made, I think is very, very hype. Like if it comes, I also if think it, it's very hype. If it comes down to like a, like a clutch situation of like, I need to like check a five and I can tap out. And if he doesn't have the right card, then like I can win right here. Or like if it's just like, all right, I'm going to like, this is a call out like play like, you have the high block, you have the high block, and like they don't have the high block and they lose, or uh, just like doing something that's like so clutch in the moment to win a piece of cardboard. I think is probably one of the hypest things that could happen in this game. What do you guys think? Same. Um. So I to dovetail off of that, like same, obviously, but I think even game to game, there's so there's so much that goes into a hype moment and i'm gonna bring up a very specific instance that i lost my fucking mind at all right uh it was during the campus championship 
this past week, and uh, James is playing Takeda, and if he hits one of these two cards, he just like hella wins. It's just a g- a game over. And so Michael makes a sick play where he throws a random card back into uh, my two card deck. His two card deck, and so he, ha- he now has a sixty six percent chance to to win, just win outright. Right here, here it is, and uh, he's Michael says the words. I mean, if you have it, you have it. This is my only option. And and there's like there's a bit of a narrative to what's happening here. And of course, James rolls wrong. He flips the wrong card, and the match is completely different because of it. It's it was just it's the information that that happened, the context of you speaking to you, explaining. All right, we both know what's going on. We're telling the third party. Um, here. Or like later in that match where like I had to, if I flipped a fatality randomly off yeah, the top of my right, deck, right, right, right. I won. Yeah. There's just no way around it. Everybody's holding their breath like, oh shit, this, there's only <laughs> one way out. Oh my it's God, like, he, it's d- like a, he did it. Or it's the like heartbreak. It's like a three and like 40, 40 card mm, yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's always those the the hype moments are also the most BM moments in when it comes to card game because a lot of hype comes from luck, uh, what you draw. And so it's super easy to be like, oh, you just sacked me. But on the other side of the table, holy shit, that was so sick. <laughs> it's so sick. Um, I think the unexpected plays are like some of the hypest things. But So the unexpected outcome for the play, right? Um, just like just the un- the play in general to me is hype. Like the one, the one play I think of more often than like not is because I watch myself lose a lot is uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> my match versus Keenan. Yes, I was going to bring that up too. Where Getting to commentate that match, ooh, it was sick. People turn two. I played Hyper Bomb into a um, Power Stone mm-hmm. into a Power Stone. And so the way that the turn worked was he played the Hyper Bomb, and Keenan half blocked it, I think, or maybe even fucking. He, I think he full blocked he maybe it. Maybe even with, full blocked it. I think he was holding. Um, I think he was holding like two no blocks. Or something like that. He was hold- oh, he was holding a big. He was holding two punches. I think is what yeah. it was. He was holding like a punch and something else. But like the play was hyper bomb, stun the two, do cool Asimov Katarina things, and he blocks with the Judy. And then I went, well, I want to get momentum because I had two bebop built, two bebop blues built, and that cancels punch. It cancels Judy and stops like the entire combo from just killing me outright on turn two. So I was like, I need this momentum. So I slung a power stone. I was like, cool, whatever. Hopefully this hits him. This is going to hit him, hopefully. He just used one Judy. And if we get a second one out, we get a second one out. Yeah. And then, like, he doesn't block it. And, and it like, did 10 I damage. Did it, and it did 10 damage. And I went, I didn't commit anything for this. Do it again? And I was just like, eh? Top four. This the, Mad Perot at the time was, like... The monster. Well, he was the monster. He'd like taken down like three or four PTCs back to back to back, and then Asma from Katarina, the art, the de- determined at that time in the meta worst Capital Bebop character, turned to him in game three. Just pop up, and th- the stream lost their mind. Like we didn't even know what was going on. We're we're just like, what the fuck? That's not how I that's remember, supposed to work. So like I remember watching it. I could I know the moment where I won because I remember you realizing I had won because it was just like. Okay, James is doing this, doing this, uh, and, and it's over. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> like, uh, but like flipping on the other side of the table. Table, Kina got sacked so hard. Holy oh, shit! Holy shit, did he? <laughs> it's so like as as. Shout out to Kina Meadows. Big shout out to Kina. <laughs> uh, how how do you, how do you define the hype moments inside of universes? Actually, bringing up the campus championship reminded me of uh, the match I was playing against uh, James with the Fade deck. Um, yeah. Even though I was playing the Bakugo deck wrong so i'm kind of glad that it it didn't move on um but the so he was playing this the whole point of his fate deck was to loop black dogs the biggest point of it was the was the loop black dogs bang infinitely just Um, so the fact that he's only playing eight attacks that means the rest are like good checks um so i had to rely on him to like i couldn't block them um he had to rely on me checking that i couldn't block his attacks because uh, I had two uh, low blocks. Hell yeah. Um, Black Tux is hot. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Perfect. So I just have to rely on him to check that. Uh, so uh, I'm just like doing things with Bakugo milling stuff. Uh, I had like uh, two second saintly beasts, uh, like a seeker stash. And uh, I had a 
Use your pool side. Uh, so I take all this damage, and at the end of he he keeps checking bed. So then the yeah, turn I've gained like two or four four life from um, a pool side, just one. Yeah, one. And then I have that was already in your discard pile. So. He uh, Bakugo destroyed the one in his staging area after getting two with the one in his discard pile to use the new one to gain two more. Yep. Yeah. And he put me at just enough vitality to live, and then I, next turn, I, I killed him. Rad, yeah. I, it, it was, it was I, that was a bad explanation probably, but... No, it was, I followed it. it. It's very, it's very, ooh. So, like, it's not just, like, the randomness, but, it's like, the truly skill-intensive gameplay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of ca- hype in our card game also comes from doing lines that your the the person watching doesn't see, right? Of it's a, it's a lot of oh shit, what's happening? Because that's like that's like regular sports, right? Or like even esports because they're like they're doing things that you can't do. Um, it's super easy to read a card and be like, oh, I'll use these words now. Um, that's it's easy, but doing them in the correct order is hard. Like, yeah. why well, are card games hard? card games hard yeah, that's a good that's fucking a question well, that's a, a different topic <laughs> um sorry you guys definitely could have talked during that time I was um, just more of, I was thinking. it uh it, it's like it's hype because of a play that doesn't happen but or a play that that you didn't see but then goes makes that way due to skill yeah are there any other hype moments you can think of michael um I don't know. A hype moment that I've had was uh, when uh, like the stream was rooting for me uh, at Dallas when yeah. I first played the Torn and Lose Fog Blanket deck. Um, I felt like my entire day was hype. Um, every time I resolved like two or three Fog Blankets, like just felt like I was the man. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Know, Fog Blanket's a hype guard. It's it's also like hype is could be determined by like something weird, right? So uh, Kyrie Tyler... Uh, was playing the Kung Jin yeah. uh, Tiger Scream deck. That deck's hype. That deck's that deck's hype in its own unique way of just like, oh shit, you better eat this. <laughs> you, you better fucking you better deal with this thirty damage attack on turn one. It might have an extra four speed. It might not. Seven mid for your whole life, Goro. On turn one, eat it. Yeah, <laughs> eat this. And like the same for like the Tim Keefe deck. Yeah, right. Like sometimes. You just the hype moment of chucking two boulders at your opponent and the game's over. Yeah. Uh, it's so, like, there's just, like, this this really cool... Like a rush. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or even, or even, like, a hype moment to the point of, like... I could even say, and this is... This is some would say this is sacrilege, right? Uh, watching a really intense defensive match where all the pieces are in play and you are sitting here on... The s- behind Garrett Brett's shoulder while he's playing Felicia, and he's got five cards in his hand, and it's it's I've got twenty cards in my stage. He has twenty cards in his staging area. His opponent has twenty cards, and you see the one Navos in his hand, and Navos says uh, plus one damage every time my opponent passes and enhance, and it's a reversal. And so you wait for them to use everything and everything and everything, and you've got your staging area. You've got a bunch of free enhances. You've got a bunch of free stuff, and you're like block reversal. I'll give it plus one speed. Yours? You'll pass? All right, it'll get plus one damage. I'll give it plus one speed. Yours? It'll it'll pass. Oh, if you pass on your next one and you don't have anything, it'll get plus three speed. All plus right, this, four. Or plus four speed? That's so gross. Uh, <laughs> this this Devos is an 18 for 30 back when that fucking didn't happen. That was not a combo. Like, Well, no, that was the only combo. <laughs> right. And so, like, there's... <laughs> A bunch Nevos, of sh- is, Nevos is one of the reasons why Neomax needed to rotate. But it was, that's like, I think that's really hype. Just watching like a really intensive. Gray Wars? Not, not even no, Grey Wars, just, but the resolution of Grey Wars, right? If we could have like a highlights moment. The the getting to Grey Wars where you've got uh, all of the Harry Potter books worth of text over on your side. And I've got all of Lord of the Rings on my side. And we like. We compare which books better. We <laughs> compare which books better. Like that sounds, that sounds not fun. Until the last turn, the turn that somebody dies, that's an interesting turn. But I'll build three pass, your turn. I'll build three pass, your turn. I'll build four pass, your turn. I'll build five pass. Fuck, I better kill him. I'll build three pass, your turn. (laughs) Like, that's not interesting (laughs) at all. But when we start doing shit, ooh, that's where it gets sick. 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting. Like when you like watch someone like try to break through a wall. Yeah. Or, like they like finally break through the wall, and then like the person has like the counter for like the wall break. Oh like, yeah. I think that's like, I think it's hype. Or like whenever someone has like the counter for the counter. Yes. Like that's always a hype moment. It always makes me want to like yeah. get up and like shout. Hell yeah! I like Tor- Tagora Brothers. Hype ass car, dude. The counter to the counter. Fuck your age, just wise, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I destroyed two foundations and drew a car. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fair and balance. Welcome to Fox News. Fucking jumping out of my goddamn seat. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hit him with a Ric Flair. Um, but yeah, I think our game is incredibly hype, and I think the more coverage that we're able to do for our game, the more casting, the more commentating that we're able to have in order to get new people involved, I think it, it's gonna just be it's gonna be really rad to the to the point where I think it'd be really interesting to have a, a, an entire channel be based around somebody like like Keenan Meadows should start a channel that is. Him and Ashley sitting down watching any recorded game in U- UFS history or universe history. Our stuff, uh, Rockford stuff, Rochester stuff. Uh, go to go to any tournament, any ter- stream tournament. Commentate the match. Tell me what's up. You want to know what I miss? I wasn't hmm. even here for this, but tell me. I watched a match from like three years ago where Battle Battle for Power was like the hot set, the hot shit, and I saw Garrett Brett uh-huh. playing Slash Man. Yeah. With a hand cam yeah. and commentators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is this? Where yeah. was that at? That where was... Uh, when is... Like, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Nats that year. I don't know where uh, or exactly when. Yeah, it definitely was. But it was it was. He it was, was Nats, playing... I'm sure. I think it was no, Worlds. It, no, it was... Um, it was Worlds um, the year that Tim Keefe won when he was playing Pharaoh Man. I'm 90% positive that's... either that... Or it would have been Rockford two and a half years ago. Yeah, something along those lines. Uh, so he, the only reason he played Slash Man at any event major wise was so that way um, his buddy Mark LeBlanc. Mark LeBlanc. I remember the name. Play Holy Felicia. Shit. Game two and three sided in Felicia. Any any time uh, LeBlanc wasn't there, Gary Brett just played Felicia because that character was not fair. But I mean, so yeah, but like hand cam commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so Garrett Brett won the last piece of cardboard Garrett Brett won. He won with Jiffany Jamber. Yeah. He only played Jiffany Jamber because Matt LeBlanc showed up playing Felicia. Felicia was in his sideboard. Yeah. What a homie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a homie. Yeah, what a homie. What a homie. Played <laughs> the most brusque character that said, let your friend play the worst one. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you can play Karama. I'm gonna play Gil. You can have it, buddy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, no, it's more like Karama Rando. What symbols do they share? All. Just kidding. Just kidding. Never mind. Just kidding. Uh, I, I was like, what the fuck? Does Karama have a third symbol? Um, no, I uh, I agree. I'm excited to see. Shout out to both those guys though. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the future of commentary, and I think that's, rise up. that's how we uh, we increase the hype in our game. We ready to move on to the next topic? Sure. Any closing words, Jeff? Cl- close us out here, buddy. Um, I couldn't think of like a sweet example, but like, one, I was thinking of a of another hype thing as well. Like when you rip a card out of their hand, and and it's the like revoke they need for your like. Cool combo. Your next attack or something like. Yeah. Yeah. That's super hype. Well said, reptile player. Well said. Uh, moving on, I, w- I want to talk about. <laughs> Gotta pay the toll. How? <laughs> Quit holding on cards. I I want to play. Uh, I want to talk about how do you beat aggro decks? We uh, I got a message from Josh, uh, the person who put on our pin tournament what was his last name josh hillers hillers i was gonna call him just hills i was gonna leave off the earth uh, well like that he he calls himself hills i believe that that was his name when we yeah we're doing things he just goes by hills i think i'm just letting everyone know his full name is hillers Sorry. and his address is <laughs> um <laughs> social security number dress you size ring size that. blood type um and the expiration date on his card <laughs> is <laughs> zero four of twenty <laughs> yeah um how do you beat aggro decks? He said, and the example that he used was, uh, he has a hard time when somebody uh, on turn two, when they go first, so turn one, they're committed, Josh builds, turn two, plays something along the lines of 
reduction, reduction, nutcracker, and he's dead. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> um, he did use the words kin to. So my question <laughs> my, my question is, big shout out to, to Josh. My question is, how do you guys personally deal with aggro decks? What do you do? Uh, I think it's, uh, personally, I think it's very symbol dependent. Um, okay. Like I just think uh, certain symbols are naturally bulkier uh, with like the defensive foundations and like just some like other symbols are just like meat and potato cards that are just like plus two speed or like increase the speed or damage X or draw cards, something like that. But as to where like certain symbols are just more inherently like defensive, like death or earth, like just symbols like that, like even life's becoming like super defensive right now. Yeah. Um, like even evil has like a chance to play super defensive. All can play very defensive. Like I just, I think it comes down to being like very symbol dependent. And then like what you want your deck to do, right? Cause like if you're playing an aggro deck yourself, then you have to win the die roll. Um, but if you're playing like, all right, that's just my opinion. Um, but like, I, mean, I think it really depends on the aggro deck. Yeah, yeah, right, and yeah, like so, like that's what I was saying. Uh, I, it's just very, it's just very deck dependent and very symbol dependent. Mm -hmm. um, like, because you could play, you could try, you can find answers under your symbol, but it doesn't necessarily mean those answers are going to be good or help your game plan. Right, and so like that's like the most important thing to help like be aggro is what helps your game plan and like slows your opponent down at the same time. Totally, James. What do you think, man? Um. I think I've said this before, and I think it comes down to blocking. You think it comes down to blocking? Yeah. Uh, so, like, I felt this way since, like, the release of Bebop and, like, the influx of all the newer, like, new new players. Not, like, the old players coming back from from old, but, like, the new new players. The new 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 players. The new 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 players. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think they know how to block. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm not saying, like, they don't know how to place a card in the card pool and go to a block. I mean, like, they don't know how to block. How to get value out of the block. Yeah. How what, how to most appropriately which one block. do you, which which attack do you take? Yeah, because it it's bad to just block it. Yeah, which attack do you block? Because it traps your opponent into a situation where they have to make a bad decision. Yeah. So you think block? Do you think blocking? Is I just think the blocking key? is the biggest part about like matchups with like aggro decks, because like most of the time for like decks like Akuma. Mm -hmm. Because I also played him that weekend, and I believe I turned to him as well. Yeah. With Akuma was um, blocking the foundations is very good. Yeah. Versus Akuma, but like sometimes you don't get that option if you don't have if you don't build those foundations, you can't pass so the box. You have to block late and not early. Yeah. Which means you have to be able to face take that first attack that might be for seven, that second attack that might be for eight, so you can block that third attack that might be for like twelve, or the fourth attack that might be for like twenty something. Like you just you kind of have to. Okay. I don't like your math in that equation. Well, one of one of them that powerful. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I understand. No, no, no. It's just uh, like so we could block, not block the first and second attack, and then take more damage than the third attack. Like that's just I'm just trolling you. You're good. Bet <laughs> your math. Your math was questionable. Sam, I'm gonna make you very happy right now. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I would say the the key is know the matchup. So, like, if, if you're having a problem with this aggro, like, what 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 makes their deck aggro? And then from that, built on your turn, that you, you're going to have a turn, almost certainly. On that turn, you need to build the right the right foundation. So, so what you're saying is you need a game plan. Typically... <laughs> Fucking game plan, baby. <laughs> Fucking put it on a shirt. If you would have just let me keep talking, actually. Uh, typically, on your first turn, you're building foundations that further your game plan. Yes, you have defensive foundations, mm -hmm. but typically, at least for me, if I'm looking at a... If I have to make a choice between a game plan one and a defensive one, I'm like, oh, game plan, because they're not going to kill me. Yeah. Uh, well, if they're going to kill you, you have to go with a defensive one. For sure. And... Um, and to further on to that, if you're really like really getting like hit hard from it, like maybe maybe you need to like mulligan. You're like this hand would be okay, but like you need to really really try and find that like that hand that stops them. Sure. 
Sure. I uh, I think it actually starts before you guys are even talking. I think that you have to figure out how to beat aggro at the conception of your deck. Yeah, yeah that the I, game plan. The, <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I. Asshole! If you're gonna if you're gonna use the scale of uh, aggro defense game plan disruption, you have to make sure that your disruption and your defense is relevant enough for your liking. Understand that Ken Two is just the biggest, craziest, monstrous. I'll kill I'll kill Scorpion before Scorpion kills me. Um, that have happened very much at a PTC to the point where I had to then switch into Vega and make sure that my defense and disruption decked. Ken out. That was the game plan, or that was that was my defense and disruption. Game, my game plan had to then switch, which then turned uh, uh, Flame Aura from an aggro card then to a defense card into a game plan card. Of I gotta have a fucking high block because <laughs> I, I need a fucking high block right now. K Kurabushi kick is doing eighty nine damage, uh, and he drew two cards off of it, and maybe drew another one. I need to make this happen, and so. From the conception of your deck, when you lay your cards out into these four piles that I'm, I'm very much going to be doing a video on now, like I have to, like I've, I actually described every deck profile that I did from this campus championship that I did profiles on yesterday in these four four categories. Um, this is this card. This uh, I got to do a Kuma still, but whatever. Um, <laughs> it's not I just like, can't edit them. It's yet. not like that deck did anything. Um, did it? I don't know. A one. A, uh, <laughs> spoilers, sorry guys. <laughs> Tyler, be bleep it out. Um, it. <laughs> it. Uh, if if it your pile, if you're losing to these aggro decks, and your pile of aggro is this big, then make a better aggro deck. Like win the uh, be better at rolling dice, right? Yeah. Uh, other otherwise, if you have an issue with if you have an issue with uh, aggro decks, fucking fix your piles. Make sure that your defense and your disruption piles are way bigger. Yeah. Maybe maybe instead of playing Revoke, you play Fade to make them shove that card back in their hand. Yep. Maybe instead of playing this cool gain of momentum card, you play a, a card with Breaker. Like, there's... If your game plan and your aggro is not better than theirs, fix it. Yep, ratios and relevant game plan. 100%, which is a little tough because of... We know the context of this question asker because this was directly after an event where that was very specified with his restrictions on the standard list, right? Playing an evil character. And so he was playing, and I'm going to put him on blast, he was playing Nightmare, which does not have a stellar defense or disruption game plan. Like, yeah. that's not really what the deck does. His defense is the body armor that he's wearing on his character <laughs> card. Correct. He's just got 29 health. Just You got to smack me maybe one more time. But Ken doesn't have to smack you one more time. He'll no. smack you twice and do 40. The man's not wearing any clothes. He's going fast. He's going fast. <laughs> and gotta, he's real bad. So you mean his name's Sonic? <laughs> he's real. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Um, and so maybe it's Can possible that fast? instead of instead of these other cards, what if in our our Sonic nightmare deck X. we were playing uh, uh, Leaf Woodman's Leaf Shield? But maybe that's it's that card. Hits your hits your combination for nightmare. Hits your requirements. It's got three speed, six damage. There's your double. But at the same time, there's a defense card, and it's that defense card. that card is used for defense. The more attacks you play, the more value you get out of it. Maybe that ends your turn. Sick. My my one mid block said that you don't get to play the game anymore. Red. I'm super down. I'll I'll totally block a reduction with that reduction. Now is a blank card. Did it. You got to kill me with your base stats. Ken has to do all the work now, and not this very unfair card. So I think I think looking at symbols is totally the right. Right call. I think, I think looking at your deck's conception and being like, what, what actually can my deck handle? It's. I don't think it's one of those things that you can necessarily just jump into a match and be like, oh, I just threw sixty cards together with the same symbol. I can beat everything because at a very high competitive level, I do believe we have the most complicated card game in in out right now. It's the most complicated card game I've ever fucking played. I think this card. I think this card game is really fucking hard, uh, with how diverse the meta is. How diverse the meta. Sorry, sorry. How diverse the meta can be. Uh, Sans. I want to talk about it again. Spirit guns nuts. Uh, but, <laughs> but like, you have to be prepared for all of that. And so yeah. if you don't, if you don't put any actual mental thought into, it's the art of war. If you know yourself. You know your enemy. You win it. Matchup knowledge. Understanding what your deck does. Uh, Block better, I guess. I remember Sun Tzu. That's the fourth chapter. Sun Tzu said, "Just block more." Right. <laughs> right. Book. Yeah. 
Yeah, what, uh, what yeah. Isaiah said, uh, to quote from uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee, don't get hit. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. Oh, the prophet. Any any closing thoughts? What are your guys' thoughts on uh, beating aggro decks? B- building is super important. Blocking is important. Making sure that you know what your what your game plan is. Defense what and you, disruption. What your options are. What? Yeah. I'll send that to Julia's shirt as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna be a little Tam going. Game plan. Game plan. Um, I uh, want to jump into my ad read real quick. How many of you have play mats that you've ordered online? How many of you guys? Have you ever ordered a play mat? I've never ordered a, a play I've, mat. I've online. ordered a play mat from Jasco. Have you ordered a play mat? Uh, we have a sponsor this week for Inked Gaming uh, play mats. If you go out to, I have a paper. If you go out to Ink Gaming and you buy one of the play mats uh, from out there, and you use the code TCG University at checkout, um, you'll get a small discount, and you can support the channel. But we have, I've ordered a ton of play mats. Like, I think at this point, I've ordered like six play mats online. I see this really rad artist depiction of a wallpaper online. Just look at look whatever cool nerdy thing you want plus wallpaper. Look it up, and you can get a play mat of, of it. We've got uh, edged stitched edged borders so they don't fray. They've got uh, dice bags. I want to say they got dice. They've got a ton of different products that aren't just uh, play mats, and. I actually am planning on ordering one for our fourth topic if we end up doing it. I'm going to order two mats um, that will be prizes for the 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 two winners of of it. And it's just incredibly high quality mats. I got a play mat signed by my favorite internet podcasting group. TCG you, University. I was gonna say, I was gonna say. <laughs> no, yeah, Caspius. Uh, kind of funny, and the 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 kind of funny crew. These professional uh, San Francisco living podcasters were like, "Holy shit, that is a nice play mat. That is a, that is a, a really, nice mouse pad. It is a really high. <laughs> that's a, they asked me, "Do we sell this?" And I was like, "No, you don't." Inkgaming.com. Use the checkout code TCG University. Save some money and go swag on your opponents when you slam that uh slam your big face down, Kevin Broberg. And help us out. And help, help us, us out. out. That would be really at the same cool. Time. Hashtag James sucks. Our second <laughs> sponsor is Cards Custom Build. Um, Halloween is literally today at time of recording, but there's not a better time to start planning out your next elaborate Halloween costume than right now. You should go to Cards Custom Build and talk to Clay. Cardwell and tell him that you're a fan of TCG University's podcast. The Clay Cardwell. The Clay Cardwell. And uh, you should get a quote on how much a costume is. Tyler's going to put up a bunch of really cool pictures. He's done um, Iron Man costumes for commission. He's He's most. Oh, he certainly will. He's. When I do oh, this, he's not gonna do that. Maybe he will. Uh, currently, he has spite. like a, a Buzz Lightyear that he's done. He has a fully working, uh, life size one to one scale R two D two that rolls around on an RC controller. He got. He has two three D printers in his house and two working CNC machines. This guy knows what's up. <laughs> this. He's. He's so sick. He's so sick. If you're a hospital, if you are, <laughs> if you are a Take con goer, <laughs> if you just like cosplay, if you've got some cash to spend and you want to make your next Halloween party, you want to show up to nationals or worlds. <laughs> you want to show up to nationals wearing a sick ass Vega mask. Go to Cars Custom Build on Facebook and let him know that you like the show. You'll get five percent off your whole order, um, and you get to talk to my dad. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to do that? So, um, once again, thank you guys for the the sponsorship. Thank you for oh, yeah. watching the ad. I want to talk about how do you know when you're winning or losing a game? The last topic? Or? That is not the last topic. <laughs> how do you know when you are winning or losing the game? You sit down and you look at your, your cards and you go, huh, I've won. Or, huh, I've lost. I want to put that, in, I want to put that feeling into words in the atmosphere. I just I just want to know what your opinions are of or your thoughts on the, the you say in your head I'm gonna win and you do how do you know Jeff I'm take a quick, yeah I'm gonna take a quick obvious one I think you know you're losing when you're checking bed yeah you think just paying attention to the top card of your deck yeah I mean just like the situations it puts you in yeah, yeah. I check bad I had to commit out I check like it's, bad it's especially bad like. You you want to play like a poke attack? Um, yeah. I'll sling this five diff. Yeah, that's really five good. Dip. 
I'll, I'll send the cyber bomb. Oh, so I have to commit two just to play my turn? Yeah. Like, I can't, I can't just end my turn. Especially on, like, turn two. Yeah. You build like, three or four, it's like, to commit half, over half to over half my stage here, like. And you're, and do you agree? Like, you just can't end your turn. No. You nothing. I, for sure. Like. Uh, to, the, to the point where, uh, on some turns, you're like, uh, yeah, I'll play this five diff. I'll check a one. All right, I guess we're committed. That's we found the definition of that word. Yeah. We are in. This is this better do something. This coffee shop are better draw me two fucking well, you good check foundations. A three and you commit half your stage and then they block and reversal and stun you. It's just like, <laughs> I guess my turn's over. Or or even worse, they, they, you're like, all right, well, like, I guess I committed my two cards. I'll use this one to maybe ready something. They're like Tagora Brothers. Fuck you. <laughs> block with an air and direct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> breaker, breaker three. three. Oh, oh, okay. It feels bad. <laughs> it really doesn't. Well, feels that's what you get for being a greedy bitch and trying to poke me on turn two. <laughs> how, dare, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you attempt to play the game? How have you done this? <laughs> um, I think uh, I think it comes down to like staging areas, like whose staging area is like better. Um, like for like offense, like versus defense. Like if I'm playing an aggro deck against like a mid range deck or just a control deck in general, like are my offensive pieces just better than their def defensive pieces? Okay, so that means that I can get in this turn. Okay, so since I can get in this turn, how much damage can I deal? A third of your life total? That's neat. I can do over half your life total? That's pretty sweet. So I mean, like there's just like a lot of variables. Like I don't think you can just like sit down. Like build five, look at your hand and say, "Oh, I just win." Because like, depending on like, it's very simple dependent too. But like, your opponent could have the revoke or the Tagore brothers or the stop to shut you down. Or uh, nobody's playing it, but like the surprise reunion. Like even though you know, I think that card's very. Hey, hype. I want you to know, I'm still the only person to top. With I think I'm the only. Person. I think that card's hype. I, I look think at that card. Shane Duckworth has. I think it has existed in his deck list. I don't know if he ever used it, but I think, uh, I think it existed. He, I think he has because he sh shouted out, sh shouted that card out a couple of times. I love that card. I I really like that card too, especially that when, card like, helped me win a match. You just when you're already at the point where like, oh, I can't do anything to my opponent. All right, well, here's one thing I can do this time. <laughs> yeah. So like, I had a really weird interaction at PTC with that card where I was playing the thirteen attack Elizabeth that just said block. Reversal with uh, Guardian Slasher into your turn. Play a suplex on my turn. Pick up Guardian Slasher for your turn again. Uh, in one of our matches. Wow, that sounds Oh, lame. it's so fucking lame, dude. And the, the Elizabeth mills my opponent eight on her attack. Yeah, so I'll. I'll it's a mill deck. It's I'll not. I'll reversal you. End your turn. Mill you eight cards. My turn? I'll play an attack. Pick up the card again. Gain build, that life back. Gain that life back. Build three. Two card, two cards to hand, and the one card, you can go. Not Man. counting like the ability to like do other things for my staging area and stuff yeah, like that. Buff, debuff, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, Before shit like fatality existed. Yeah, like, that deck would definitely play fatality. Yeah. Well, I, my decks would have played fatality and removed your guardian slashers. <laughs> you get that second shit chance. out of here. <laughs> Uh, well, you have also like you get to play uh, Orphid Alchemist. True. Yeah, stop that. True, true, true. <laughs> yeah, that card's hype. Anywho, uh, so like, um, <laughs> so one of the plays was he, I, I used the response to play reversal. He out of your leagues my reversal, to which, oh no, I remember what it was. I went to, so like it didn't work, but it won me the game, which is funny. I went to cancel one of his abilities because I, I would have won if I did. It was pay the four to cancel his ability to which he played an out of your league that canceled my super surprise reunion to which then removed itself so I could play Corona de Fleur, which is the crown of flowers from Eliza's support that says after your opponent removes one card from the game, draw two cards to where I drew two cards and drew the block I needed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that card did win you the game. That's rad. Yeah. That's super rad. Like I what if I I what if I got the activation and then I was he played the out of your league and I went Fuck, where's my out? What do I do here? Shit. Shit. And so uh, for the clarity, out of your league's ability says Pay after three, it resolves. Cancel response. After it resolves. It leaves. It. Yeah. So you cannot use this really rotated Crondella Floor card or whatever. Uh on oh, right now. On the cost of remove colon doesn't work that way. It has to be uh, effect. I don't know if it says effect. I'll look it up, but I'm not sure on that. Man, do I not care? 
for all my Jasco extended people. I guess <laughs> look it up on Ultra. How do you Tyler put up? Right how here. do you tell if you're winning or losing? I think I think you can just feel by honestly just the cadence of the deck or the cadence of the match. Yeah. If 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 your game plan is not being met with any disruption, or if you are just seeing all of your disruption pieces and your opponent's just blindly walking into it, um, it is or just like everything you're doing is just going wrong. Yeah, so like I'm trying to play my game plan and it's not as strong as your disruption. That's how you feel you're going to lose. Or, or just like you're, I'm doing all of my things, but it's just not doing anything. Yeah, yeah it's not enough. I'll stun two. Well, I had to deal one of groceries, so you I stunned had to one. Send some worlds. Right. It's like there's you look at you look at the board and go, oh, half of the cards in my hand don't are blank. They're they're blank, or the value that I get of. Every card that we play has the cost of discard one card, right? Yeah. And so because I am playing it into the card pool, but and every block has the potential to say discard a card, stop all damage. Asterix, obviously. But like if if at the really rudimentary scale of if me discarding four cards doesn't equal you discarding four cards or doesn't equal me having enough of a setup or enough of of this extra life resource life yeah um i haven't destroyed enough foundations or committed foundations or put you in a position where you have to you're trying to build back again put me in a position where i can win the next turn right it, it's it's really easy to have that feeling of i'm losing how do i how do I recover? That dread. And so that's the question I actually have is now that we've figured out like how we're losing, how we're winning, how do you recover from I'm in a losing position? I'm going to lose the game. How do I dig myself out of this? That's the real topic. Uh, so I think you have to find yourself or put yourself in a position where you can gain value, whether it's making your opponent commit extra cards or you like doing the right block, the correct block to put your opponent in like a weird situation. Like I think you you don't have to play like out of your mind, but you have to play correctly. Like you you have to you have to play the right block. You have to a little, a little bit has to go like your way, obviously, because I mean it, it's, this is a check based game. Yeah. So I mean you know like numbers and. And whatnot, but like you, you need to find some way to get value or to turn your opponent off from getting like a lot of value. Um, and so, like, I think that's like one way to come back. And then, I mean, obviously, like another way to come back is like to sack your opponent. Um, yeah. But that's something that you can't just rely on. Sure. Um, but I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Like, I'll draw this one random card, and if it's like the block, the the stop that I need to turn off his offensive turn or the revoke I need to shut off this next enhance. That's a shotgun. That's going to deal half damage yeah. rounded up. Like there's, there's just like a lot of different like instances. Like, it, like I think it comes out of two things and it's like a 50, 50 in my opinion. And like, I guess it's really simple to just say that outright, but like it comes down to like either making absolutely no wrong plays from that and, point forward, and from that point forward until you till you gain advantage so much from your opponent's misplays or just slight disadvantages they put themselves in through all your correct plays, or you have to make a ballsy play to gain advantage. Ooh, I like that. You have to make the you have to you have to play the gambit. You have to you have to make the gambit, or you know you're gonna lose. That's like, so it's interesting. Just, you have to make the bad. You have you have to either like make the bad play. You have to, win. to make I the bad it. play. I love like, it. Like I talk about, I talk about this a lot. Where like I practice making bad plays. I really do. At this point, it's not really even practice anymore. <laughs> 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 I really love to say that. <laughs> uh, but like you have to make the bad play. Like there's there's a bunch of times where I've come across the moment where it's just like, man, I lose if he has another attack. But it, but I could block this and live. But if I block this, there's no way I kill him next turn. This card kills him. I'm just going to face tank this and hope he doesn't have the attack. Yeah. And then you face tank and it's just like, don't have it. Don't have it. Good. He didn't have it. Or, ah, dang, he played an attack, but this still blocks it. So I guess we live and I, we hope for the best and we go again. Or, <laughs> or the even, gambit again. <laughs> even the half block, like you could possibly just do math, right? How, yeah. many, how many attacks does he have out? Have you seen him put any in his momentum? Yeah. If so, what are those attacks? What are the zones? Like there's plenty of uh, uh, accounting. You have to pick and, and choose your battles. And bookkeeping and you, have you can do. you have to know you're going to lose. <laughs> you you have to warfare. know which. You have to know. You have to know. Pick which. his deck up and throw it across the room. Call a judge. It's an illegal deck. He Check his deck list. <laughs> he doesn't have the cards. He's missing 40 cards. <laughs> Judge, my <laughs> opponent let me throw his deck across the room. <laughs> How could he do that? This is Jeff, gross what are your, misconduct. What are your thoughts, man? Um, it, you know, so maybe we just have to go full defense. You know, um, we're not slinging attacks. 
the at least we're not seeing an attack to have blocks. Um, we are, you know, we're scared of their deadlock abilities, but we don't care about that anymore. We have to build into deadlock so we can block everything that they're throwing at us. Sure. Um, Happens. And then eventually you'll stabilize. They'll commit out trying to kill you, possibly. And then Hopefully. You turn it around. I think, uh, I think this works really well. That that plan works really well unless they're playing some uh, type of throw mechanic. If they're playing a shotgun, uh, shotgun throws or, in general. I think I think the the point of throws is to put you on a clock. Uh, I'll I'll play this meaty throw. I don't care if it's half blocked. I'll still hit you for four. All right. I'll build two pass. Your turn. I'll block my things. And so eventually you'll just die to that. But I think. You're you're in the same spot that I'm at. The advice that I'd give, which would just be, honestly, don't get tilted. The it is super easy to check bad on all your foundations and commit half your staging area every turn, and, and then and that. and literally draw great cards for the next four turns, and just be a punching bag for your opponent, just sitting in the corner, just trying to hold up, hold your hands up, and block. Like it, it is. It is a thing that happens in in our check luck based game. It just happens. But as long so as skill. you have a game plan of okay game plan. Uh, so the best example that I can give for this is actually at this uh, uh, tournament that we played this past weekend in the Evil tournament. I was fighting as Jetta versus Shanak, which says if I use my once per turn, you add one. He either commits my character, which sucks dick in my deck every time i've ever lost with jetta my character has been sealed or committed that's it that's not true like I it's it's, beat you it's like a 99 percent chance of like if my character was sealed or committed i lost that turn it just it, that's how it works or he just blows up my best foundations so i got to use in our th- three round match i used my once per turn four times all four times shinnok was banged <laughs> <laughs> so and we got to a point where I was sitting there and I'm at like three life and I'm building one passing going well I get to review a card draw two cards and one of these has to be dragon flare and then I win and as long as I can sit here and I can keep my guard up and make sure I don't do anything I've figured out my game plan I have to make sure game that plan. I've looked I've looked inside of uh, sorry I figured out my disruption of looking inside his discard pile and making sure that I've had my correct block zones and Checking as little as possible so that I can draw the one card that I need, the one of in my deck. Dragon Flare, burn you for four. You are at three. My other attacks were not going to get through. He had 15 foundations. They just weren't. A burn had to be the option. And so making sure that when you when you are you draw your hand of, of gray, you need to think of two things. What does this hand get for me? What does this hand do? And what is the out? If if I drew what hand what card? What cards, what six cards am I looking for? Do I have two of them and I need the other four? Then we'll hold them, I guess. Just m- being able to mentally prepare yourself for, I am in a shitty spot and I need to be able to think through this. To get out of the corner. To get out of the corner. And understand that just sitting here playing turn by turn is not going to get you there. You have to be playing chess and thinking three, four, five hands ahead. Yeah. And thinking about where's... You have to play for the moment. Where's... Hmm? You have to play for the moment. You have to play for the moment as well as the next moment. Like you have to do both. A lot of times, whenever we play universes, especially in nowadays, you're you're constantly playing for. All right, I guess I drew double the, t- these two super value cards. All right, sling them out. I don't really care what I check until you get to the point where I drew two great cans in a row. Well, I know my next hand should better have some orange in it. I have to figure out how to get there. Yeah. Anything to add on how to how to win, how to lose, which is a hilarious topic. Do it with dignity. Do it with dignity, yeah. Don't be a sore loser. Don't be a sore winner. Yeah, don't be a sore winner. I like that. I like that a bunch. Man, is it hard not to be salty sometimes. It is. Oh, dude, I get it. It super is. I'm the saltiest person I know. I agree. You are the saltiest person I know. I'll agree. You are the saltiest person, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard not to be salty. Honestly. Oh, it's, it's why Tyler doesn't play this game. Or play Smash Brothers. Or really play any card game. It's <laughs> the reason Tyler doesn't play. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Tyler doesn't play Smash Brothers because he gets so fucking No, no, no. I knew, about, I knew about that, but is that why he doesn't play he, Oh, I have no play? idea why he doesn't play so, UFX. Oh. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, so the, the explanation I got was... 
See, I can not play for two months, come back, and I'm fine with me being bad. But I could play every day for two months and lose and be mad because I've put so much time and effort into it. Wow. And so, like, that's, like... And see, so, like, for me, like, that's not exactly, like, the reason, like... Because nobody wants to lose. Yeah. Obviously. For sure. Right? And, like, if you lose, like, with a smile on your face, it's like, what are you doing? You know? Like, I, that's just my opinion. Should I just leave? Obviously. Should I just leave, I Michael? Just leave? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, because I mean, like, there's like, there's those times where I it's, like, enjoy a good this game. game too much, and then sometimes your opponent just like steamrolls you, and then they offer you the handshake, and I just want to take that person. I just want to deck them in their mouth for, because it was not a good game. You're gonna sack me. You're gonna rub it in, and then you're gonna offer a handshake. Maybe I'm gonna I rub hate it you. in, and, the... then, and this is the reason why I quit Yu-Gi-Oh. The other side of the table. It was a hype ass moment, dude. <laughs> he fucking turned dude your ass. <laughs> the, re- the on this side on Wintertown, we're fucking popping off, dude. We checked yeah. the six when we needed it. Ah! No, 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 no. It doesn't even it doesn't even come to that. Are you talking it, about when I played the fatality reversal? What from the campus championship? No. Oh, okay. I'm literally talking I did that to you. just yeah. a billion Sorry. instances in my lifetime. It feels really bad when you get blown out. They rub it in and then they offer the handshake. That's just my opinion. This is, it's why I don't offer. That's why I don't offer. Usually don't offer handshakes, and it's why I don't take handshakes. It's because it's just a feel. It's a feel bad moment, and it. Oh man, sorry. Sorry. To no, be I, a I'm super down. No, no, no. no. This is sorry. this is this is really cool. Your, I don't want your pity handshake. Okay. You, you beat me. Let me let me take my L, and get away from the situation that is totally fair that is an okay way to respond to it i think instead of handshakes you should just do fist bumps though because that's very non-personal uh i see as much as i'd love to do it i'd have the strongest urge to snail everybody so <laughs> i lost <laughs> but fuck you, you. <laughs> snail you're little yeah, yeah, you two owed me in eight minutes, snail. <laughs> Take that, dork. I spent twenty dollars just so I could snail you. <laughs> like I drove, I drove eight hours just to snail you, specifically you. Maybe I lost the war, but I got this battle, eh? <laughs> I totally get where I'll you're coming you from, end. and I would love to actually like dive a little deeper into like positive mentalities when it comes to events, because I think. I think it's super easy to get tilted off the face of the planet and then to just ruin the rest of your day. And like some advice on not just not for you, obviously, yeah. but as as the master tilter, some advice that that you could look back on yourself. Call Michael talking to fucking pissed off Michael. I would love to have that that podcast. That oh, sounds. Dude. And then we'll just play I, that video every time we get tilted. Yeah, uh, I actually <laughs> get sacked by a throw deck round one when you decided last minute not to put throw hate in your side. Yeah. <laughs> fucking. <Yeah. laughs> oh no, the ground is shifted. Look over, Michael's aside. <laughs> Dude. Uh, super upset. I I was uh, really uh, was really happy with myself uh, actually at the Omaha PDC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got steamrolled by Air Ground Smash round one, and I couldn't help but crack a smile as I was leaving the table. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, I shout out to Tyrell Scott because he's like a really like fun, Tyrell nice, Scott's a very awesome guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me getting steamrolled, I it felt less okay. So. One thing I liked about Yu-Gi-Oh! is when you play an opponent and, like, you, you have a conversation, like, the entire time. Because uh, I'm, like, definitely, like, a mix of, like, that player of, like, I'm here to win. Don't talk to me. I'm playing my game. I'm leaving. To where the other point or the other side of that is, like, hey, like, we can have a conversation. We can play a game. We can have a good time. Like, I'm here to play a game. At the That's kind of how, like, right? our match was in and so, too. Right. And so, like, it just comes down to, like, if you're, like, trying to be serious all the time or if you're trying to have fun. And it's very hard for me to separate the two Michaels. Uh, yeah, Mike and Ike, or what not. Mike and uh, Michael. Mike and Michael. Yeah. yeah. Which one has the evil mustache? The evil mustache? Which, one, which one's your actual name? <laughs> which one's actually Michael? Uh, I'd like to think that the nice version of me is Michael. And then the, the, the salty, excuse my language, the salty bitch Michael is Mike, not Michael. Um, or it could be like E-A-L instead of A-E-L. But, Ooh. Um, yeah, Very hard for an audio medium to tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, Michael versus Mike Al. Mike Al. Yeah. Mike uh, Fuck our last topic. I would actually want to just talk about this. Aww, what was the last topic, no. though? Uh, well, so I actually want to talk maybe a little bit off camera okay. if, that, if that's fine okay yeah i just wanted to know what it was um i uh i was curious 
I, I think mentality in events is like like make or break a lot of it honestly like i yeah. think i think mentality in in events is truly it, what what happens in between the rounds is just as important as what's happening on on the table and what happens on the table affects in between and vice versa right yeah. so like what's some advice that you would give to people if to to help them not be mad, not be salty, and have just a, a, just a have truly better second half of days or a a better mindset going into the event and during the event. Don't eat lunch at all. I hate lunch. No, don't listen what? to no. don't listen to James. I can, I can't eat lunch. James just I, has bad records and a terrible stomach. I can say yeah. I can say don't eat heavy. There's plenty of events you have to eat light. where I've where I've oh, eaten yeah. just a little. I've eaten just. One extra curly fry from Arby's. Oh, fucks me up, dude. I'm, I just so, eat. I'm so dead. I There's just eat and I'm just you're destroyed. Like, you're like, like zonked out? You're like... Uh, so it it's what? it's just like, you know how you get like a little lead belly when you eat too much? It's real hard to play like very hyper competitive cards on lead belly. <laughs> like you're just sitting there. Oh, just... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I... He doesn't have a belly. Oh, we do. <laughs> I just like I I eat and I it's like I it's like I try to throw the second half of a tournament. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> like I just it's like I off. it's like I intentionally try to throw wins away. It's have you guys ever seen Space Jam? <laughs> it's like when the monsters steal his power. They the monsters take his deck and then the second one he's like, what's happening? <laughs> What? <laughs> Charles Barkley, why are you giving that wins over there? Was <laughs> that right? Is that a person? Is that a dude? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. the brown like, mound like, of rebound. Yeah. Shout out to anybody whoa, who knows that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's literally what he calls himself. So, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> rebound, huh? <laughs> um. oh, I thought you were referring to the brown mound part. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get him with that what, Charles what's Barkley. Some, what's some positive <laughs> mentality you can give to somebody going into or out of during an event? Hmm. I talk to um, myself every day, all day, so I already have plenty. You're what? good. You're good. You go. You go. Go. <laughs> you go. Go. Girl. <laughs> um. Hit him with that go. Go. <laughs> I was gonna say like before you go. Go. I don't know. This doesn't really affect me that much because I personally, I'm just like a nervous wreck the whole tournament. Okay. So I mean, I I can remember like a few times where I'd get like salty. Sorry. Good call. But, I mean. Sometimes the tournament's over by that time. So, okay. Like, I mean, like you're you're done with the tournament. Um, but yeah, most of the time I'm just like nervous, especially if I'm doing well. I'm like nervous. So um, I'm not sure if this is like super great great advice, but like vent. Definitely like get it out. Don't like internalize it. For sure. If they sacked you, you need to tell your friends about it. I think that that helps. And at the same time, whenever you do vent it, uh, don't suck it back in and try and vent again, right? right? So, like, I get fucked up by turn two missile launcher, or I'm a, I'm a fuck. Mike, are you okay? You dying? No, I'm about to enjoy myself after the next couple seasons, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh... I, I, I fucked up and I attempted to block or I knew that I was greedy on a play or something like that and I get livid. I'll vent and then it has to be gone. Hakuna Matata. I can't I can't go back after the next round and be like Remember Man, when? <laughs> like dude, eight rounds ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Er. About to give the most useless advice ever though. Yeah, go ahead. Uh don't let it fucking bother you. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, that's the easy response, right? But I mean, like, no, I mean, like, like it's easier, I don't, I really blood. don't get tilted because yeah, I no, well, don't good, good care. For you. Good for you. Good for just me stop man, caring. But, just yeah. stop caring. <laughs> Become lifeless and soulless inside. Do you want me to? We gotta. You want to pause the episode and blow your nose? Uh, you guys can keep talking. All right. I'll be back. I uh, I don't think. Die. <laughs> it's not the most in front of the camera problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just. It's super easy to have this downward spiral yeah. instead of an upward one. I think the other thing that you should do is not just talk about your losses, but talk about your successes. Yeah. And and yeah, that was another thing I was gonna say. Like like re like remind yourself like what your deck's supposed to do. Like yeah, like your game. Dang, I almost I 
almost said it, so now I have to say it. Your game plan. Hell yeah, your game, game plan. plan. Fucking put on a shirt, baby. Hashtag game plan. Um, game plan. It's a. I think I think it truly is like reviewing. Uh, do you guys remember your fucking smart goals in school? It just all that shit. Yeah, and, well, and you can like you can learn from like why you lost too. Like, yeah, oh, for sure. Okay, I don't do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Don't be a greedy bitch. Maybe we can fucking win some games now. Like, I'll, oh, I'll I'll never make that mistake again. Right. Well, hopefully, whenever I, that was my one loss, I'm now gonna run it up through the the losers bracket, and I'm gonna go place 14th in hit climb the ladder. Climb, climb the ladder. I'm gonna go place 14th, and then and then have a have a hard day later. But like, I'll I'll run it back through. Just like try, trying to find these silver linings uh, spins on it. Michael, is there anything that that you have to say in order to like help the audience out there not be tilted? <sighs> I'm, or like what good mentalities to have going into or out of an event. Um All right. This is me talking to myself, but I'm talking to you. It's like you're inside my mind right now. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, all right. So, number one thing I try to think of is that at the end of the day, it's just a game and the only value that I lost was the day. Right? I mean, I don't mind spending like $20 and hanging out with my friends all day. It's totally cool. I already do that, like, almost every day. So, really, the only thing I lost was the day. And so that's 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 all you can think of is, like, you don't – all right, look, I'm a, I'm a person of value, okay? Hell, yeah. I like to talk about value. Hell, yeah. So I only lost a little bit of value because I gained the experience of my matches, whether it was the people that I met, the decks I played, the interesting interactions between two characters or two symbols. Or at two people. Of, at the end of the day, I still learned something, and I didn't just like lose out on everything. Sure, I might have lost five matches in a row or something like that. Or I found that a certain interaction in my deck doesn't work like the way I want it to or something like that. But, um, yeah, look, <clears throat> as I've already repeated like two or three times, I, I haven't lost any value except for the day that I spent, right? Yeah. And, like, how else would I have spent my Saturday, right? With all my friends out of town and stuff Losing like that. Losing five like, more matches to them instead. Right. <laughs> Shut <And> up. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> and then, like, another thing is, like, since it is just a game and you are only losing a day, like, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. Like, sometimes your opponent... Just draws the answer. Just draws it out. Sometimes bad days are bad days. Right. Like when it rains, it pours. And like when it's sunshine and like rainbows, sometimes Birds leprechaun. Sometimes a leprechaun pops out, gives you a pot of gold, you top a tournament. You know, never know. Like there's like a lot of random variables that can like happen like in your day, and like you can take them like with a grain of salt, or you can like take them like with a chip on your shoulder. It's just there's like a lot of different things that like you can do like mentally. Uh, <coughs> Um, and so like, I don't know, like, I like to like try and play out like turns, um, of like a game that like had just happened. Um, and so like, if I'd have done this differently, then he probably would have still have done this and then I would have done this and then maybe he did this first and then I could have done this, uh, because he forgot or he didn't think about it or, you know, something like that. And then like, he stopped playing the game for half a second (laughs) and like, and you can still calculate like. Okay, so in the end, it actually didn't even matter if I drew this card first because, like, of yes. just statistics or something like that. <laughs> or, like, if you did have a draw card <clears throat> and you didn't use it and then you block and you whiff your block and you die, and then you look at your next card and it's, oh, okay, I would have passed this check, then, like, you know, that's just, it's just, it comes down to, like, numbers and it comes down to RNG, it comes down to the luck. And so, like, at the end of the day, there's not really anything that you can do unless you're, like, a really good cheater, which, you know, like, a good portion of the Yu Gi Oh community is, but. Um, <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it over here. Just trying to fucking stack our decks and shit. It's real hard when you play a check based game. Yeah. It's real hard. I've been taking a lot of uh off the cuff magic. <laughs> <laughs> Only wearing long sleeves at events. <laughs> huh? Huh? Six. <laughs> but yeah, so you're like you're not losing any value because you're only you're only losing like the day and then like at the end of the day, like it's just a game. And then like and another like thing that you can do is like just take it as I think I already like said a little bit earlier, but like you can just take it as like an experience for sure like, in general, and you just don't have to like always be like upset about everything. Like whenever I went to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, I was so salty like all the time. 
uh, just like, oh, I got, I got sacked by this dude, and like, the, like all the, I'm, I'm upset at the other, the other player because he drew his hand, because he sat down and he played the game with me. I'm, I am upset at him, and like that's something that like I shouldn't be. Like it's I, not his fault. Because it's not his fault. I'm the one who cut his deck. And so that's why for the longest time at Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments, I didn't cut people's decks. I shuffled it and I set it down. Never cut. Every single time my opponent offered to cut, never cut. Because I don't want to cut them into like their pieces and stuff like that. Uh, that's let why them, I did. Let them sounds, set your fate. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Like you um, say, say, say I don't know. I'm like randomly like superstitious too. Um, but I mean, that's like a whole, like another thing. Different topic for a different podcast. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the supernatural podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Superstition. Yeah. I don't like, you just, you can't be like, you can, but like, you don't, I'll go back to it. You don't gain any value being mad at somebody all day. Do you find, uh, talking to people helps or would you rather, I'm going to use the word um, grieve by yourself. It, Fume by yourself is a better word choice. It like depends. Like if if I'm in the situation of Smolder. okay, so like if when I played you the other day in the campus championship, like a month and a half ago, and I gave damage to the shotgun, even though it already killed you, and then you drew a card and it was the revoke. If if that would have happened like in tournament, I would have beat myself up literally all day. It was when I was playing the Grow deck. Um, yeah, that's right. I would have literally beat myself all day to the point where I'm sitting down in the next match, and I'm still thinking about that loss. And I'm upset at the new opponent that I'm facing at because I shouldn't even have to play you. I I shouldn't even be sitting you across the table. I should, I've definitely, definitely been there. Yeah, I shouldn't even have to look at your mug because I shouldn't have lost the last game. I should have won. I am so dumb, or I'm so bad, or I'm so unlucky. Insert excuse here. Insert the birds were chirping. The insert, sun was in my eyes. Insert whatever reason. This dude squirted ketchup on my pants. You know, whatever. You know, whatever. You right, 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 right. No uh, Johns. What yeah. <laughs> Damn you, Kevin Broberg. Quit eating hot dogs at tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag no Johns. Yeah, no. That's a. Uh, that's that is really insightful. It's fun to actually like get inside your brain because whenever you get tilted off the face of the planet, I have no idea how to help you. I have no idea. Uh, there's, 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 there's no help. I'm just gonna tell him hashtag no Johns. Um, and even, even like other people that I see get mad. Uh, fuck, I got mad. Like I got super mad at the Atlanta PTC when I lost against like a like a a, a one ten matchup. I was playing Jackie. They were playing Lilith. I, it's impossible for me to win that game, and I took it to game three. And I should have been fucking ecstatic that I didn't even have the opportunity. To I play didn't. Game even, three. I didn't get rolled. I did not get. I did not get twentyed. I, I did. I did. Yeah. And so, yeah. What do you guys do to to cope with the 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 loss? What men- mentally do you do to prepare yourself for events? Uh, sleep well, hygiene. Uh, don't wear hats. I go cry in the cry in the bathroom. Every time I wear a hat, I get a headache. <laughs> Give us some hot tips in the comments. I go oh, cry I in the bathroom while my friends are playing card games. Had a boy <laughs> in uh, our in our hotel room. Lose, How many times? <laughs> lose round one. Only so you one get that the I buy. Remember. So you get the buy, <laughs> and then take the hour to take a nap. Boom, crushed it, crushed it. You can't lose anymore, <laughs> and the the tie fucked your tiebreakers. Um, I got it. Just don't lose the Tim Keith. Good point. Good point. You don't cry in a bathroom while your friends are playing a clue game. <laughs> In your hotel. Did you really cry? No. Oh, <laughs> so buddy. My heart my heart hurt. I've gotten so fucking angry by how many times I have to I have forced myself to watch that match over and over. And I keep doing it to myself. So with that. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Study Hall. Um, remember uh, our sponsors, Ink Gaming and Cards Custom Built. If you like the podcast, please go to patreon.com slash TCG University, as well as Facebook, as well as YouTube, all of them TCG University. And from all of us here at the university. At the campus. Stay learned. No. Stay ben learned. Le- le- stay glad. Stay glad. That's not our fourth one. I'm not, I'm not keeping that. <laughs> it was, it, was it fucking topic. will be when Glad fucking sponsors us. <laughs> Glad hefty bags. <laughs>